The old cardboard belt is dead. I killed it, but it was a mercy killing after seeing it limp through existence battered and disrespected over the bony shoulders of a child and a Dutch porn star. However, it turns out this incident is not without precedent, as the wrestling history books are full of belts being abused on purpose or otherwise, whether it's by being physically thrown around, booked awfully, or strapped to the waist of someone utterly ludicrous. In one year, Vince Russo managed to do all three to the WCW title, and oh, we'll get to that. I'm Adam from WhatCulture.com, and here are 10 times wrestling titles were disrespected. Number 10, Austin throws the IC title in a river. This is probably the least heinous because it involves The Rock and Steve Austin's years-long feud, and that is a very nice piece of meat. But still, it did involve the poor IC title being hoyed into a river. It happened in December 1997, with the rattlesnake being forced to forfeit the belt to the Brahma Bull. Instead, he chose to chuck it from a bridge. Treasured memory though it may be, it did involve Austin basically saying, I don't care about this piece of crap belt anymore, and then discarding it. That is cold. Ice cold very cold. There's a phrase I'm looking for, something cold. Totes cold, that's it. The Rock would get revenge a year and a half later, throwing Austin's smoking skull belt off a bridge of his own. Number nine, Hornswoggle is the last ever cruiserweight champion. Uh, Hornswoggle, the walking embodiment of the death of storytelling. No, but seriously, best of luck with all the future endeavours, and the man who played the leprechaun isn't a terrible human, I assume, but he was the angel of death for things that used to have potential. The anonymous raw GM, dead when Hornswoggle got involved. Vince's illegitimate son angle, dead when Hornswoggle got involved. DX, yep. Finley's in-ring career, mm-hmm. And of course, the Cruiserweight title. You know, that thing that Dean Malenko, Eddie Guerrero, Chris Jericho and Rey Mysterio turned into one of the hottest belts in WCW. You know, that one. Yeah, they put that belt on Hornswoggle and then was retired 65 days later in 2007 because of some storyline bull****. For shame, Tadpole, for shame. Number eight, Nikita Koloff smashes up the US title. Nikita Koloff, judging by his name, was obviously an Italian gentleman. No, of course, he was a stereotypical foreign Russian heel. Koloff Udria. Koloff Machka. Yes, I know that's Bulgarian. Be quiet, you party-ruining pedant. When Koloff returned to WCW after some time away in the AWA, what better title for the Russian nightmare to go after than Lex Luger's US title? USA! USA! Flag, flag, flag! Go home, team! And he really f***ing went after it, smashing it against a ring post, ruining it, and forcing the debut of a new belt, which would last all the way until the invasion. And speaking of belts being destroyed, number seven, Greg Valentine destroys the IC title. Greg Valentine, name of a saint, hair of a Barbie, also fancied himself a belt ruiner. The WWF were planning to debut a new intercontinental title belt in 1985, the classic design we all know and love, and what better way to do it and create some heat in the process than by destroying the old one. At that point, Valentine had a 285 day reign with the IC title, the fifth longest reign of all time, when Tito Santana beat him for the championship in a steel cage. Incensed, Valentine took the belt inside the cage and destroyed it. Bad grandpa. Very bad flamboyant grandpa. Number six, Ted DiBiase buys the WWF title. Onto the WWF title now, and another act of storyline disrespect. The year was 1988, I was only one year old at the time, Jack's parents would be born two years later, and somehow Sam was already running up against an editing deadline. Back to work, dickhead! Ted DiBiase, the big rich son of a bitch, had been trying to buy Hogan's title, but the Hulkster said no dice. Then Andre beat Hogan in February 1988 on Saturday night's main event, thanks to Dave Hebner's evil twin, Earl Hebner, no seriously though. As soon as Andre was crowned champ, he sold the belt to the dastardly DiBiase. The belt was immediately vacated by President Jack Tunney because of the Million Dollar Man's disrespectful actions, leading to the WrestleMania 4 Championship Tournament. Number five, Harvey Whippleman wins the women's title. Ah, the women's title has seen some BS come its way in the last few decades, the worst of which we will get to. But how's this for starters? Harvey Whippleman is noted for being the manager of Sid Justice, Kamala and Bertha Fay, and also for participating in a tuxedo match with Howard Finkel, one of the worst things to have ever happened, and I do mean of all things in the world. Whippleman was noted for one more thing, being the only man to have ever won the women's title. Mm. He once dragged up as Hervina and defeated the cat for the belt in a Lumberjill Snow Bunny match in January 2000. That happened this side of the millennium. Cool. Number four, Mr. Perfect hammers a WWF title. The last instance of storyline disrespect now, and it's a shocking sight to see a man smash up the winged eagle belt with a hammer because it was a bloody great belt design, even though it didn't spin, which obviously makes it worthless. In October 1989, on an episode of Saturday Night Main Event, the genius, aka Lanny Poffo in full camp mode, beat Hulk Hogan via count out after Mr. Perfect clobbered him with the WWF title before scampering off with it. Later that night, Perfect told the belt to get wrecked and bashed it apart with a hammer while the genius danced 
around in the background weirdly. Hogan then found the belt and cradled it like it was a dying fawn. Many fans believe that the remains of the belt were turned into the Hardcore Championship, but that's a myth. The remains actually currently reside with a private collector. Number three, everything that happened to the WCW title in 2000. Ho ho, Nelly! So by the year 2000, WCW had begun to spiral out of control. They were being crushed in the ratings by WWF, and like a child trying to attract attention, it started screaming, eating bugs, and bashing its head against doors. It simply ruined its title in 2000, with the belt changing hands 19 times, including four times in eight days at one point. It was vacated six times and put around the waist of not only David Arquette the actor, but also Vince Goddamn Russo himself, the lunatic behind most of these awful booking decisions. It was also thrown to the ground at Bash of the Beach that year in a terrible work shoot turned real shoot between Russo and Hogan. By the time WWF bought WCW, the belt was practically worthless. Number two, Shane Douglas throws down the NWA title. Shane Douglas, or Dean Douglas if you've never heard of ECW, here's looking at you Jack, may not have had the biggest of impacts in WWF, but the franchise found himself at the heart of one of the most shocking and controversial things to ever happen to a championship belt. In 1994, he was part of ECW, then called Eastern Championship Wrestling, a company that was also part of the National Wrestling Alliance. Now, the NWA heavyweight title was vacant, and Douglas won it in a tournament. He then took to the ring and recited the names of previous NWA champions like Luthez, Harley Race, Ric Flair, Ricky Steamboat, before then saying they could all kiss his ass and then he threw the belt to the ground. He pronounced NWA dead and held up the ECW title as the only world title worth holding. Shortly after, Eastern Championship Wrestling would become Extreme Championship Wrestling, and there aren't many more extreme ways to make a name for yourself than by disrespecting, at one time, the most prestigious belt in the country. And number one, Medusa trashes the women's title. Probably the most famous example of a belt being trashed, and this time, literally, the Monday Night Wars were in full swing, and in December 1995, Medusa, formerly a Lundra Blaze in WWF, defected over to WWF. CW. Unfortunately for Vince, she happened to be women's champion at the time, and Eric Bischoff, the Cheshire Cat's deadbeat dad, said, bring the belt with you. She did, and dropped the nearly four decades old belt in a trash can, live on air. I can't fully comprehend what must have happened in Vince McMahon's head when he found out about that, but I imagine it was a lot like a strobe light fucking a drum kit inside a tornado. And that's our list. Did we miss any out? Tell us about it in the comments. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. You can even follow me on Twitter here. I'm Adam from WhatCulture.com, and I'll see you soon.